welcome back to another edition of Movies That Move We. She's back, y'all. She's Hi. back. <laughs> so today we are talking about Creed 3. I'm going to let you start because she saw it twice. She's watched the whole series. Now, I will say that I initially was introduced to Creed a few years ago. It was not something that I was into since day one or anything like that. I was introduced to Creed a few years ago and fell in love with the first two movies before this one. When this movie came out, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to go see it. Went and saw it, fell in love all over again. And then I realized Rocky Balboa is in these movies and I've never seen Rocky. So I went back and watched Rocky 1 all the way to Creed 3. So, just so that I can have a little bit better insight, more information, you know, there's a lot of references that are used, such as, what was it, Punk, uh, Punchy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, like, yeah. and even now, my daughter loves it. So, I did, you know, do a little bit of background research before, like, watching Creed 3. So. I did not, because, I don't know, I've never really had a particular interest in the whole Rocky series, like everybody knows the Adrian part. I mean, but I think if you watch you know it, the running up the, the the Philadelphia Art Museum steps, which by the way they recently moved the statue. Oh, where they move it? I don't remember, but they did move it. It's oh, not there anymore. Sad. But it's not stopping anybody from running the steps. They still yeah. run and they do the whole. That's kind of sad though. Yeah. But um, actually, I watched an interview with Sylvester Stallone, and he said because. Basically, because production changed with Creed 3, um, you know, previous to the other two films. And Michael B. Jordan is also producing this film, Creed 3. So, you know, with the um, with them changing in, I guess, a direction of focusing more on his family and, like, more of that type of... It's more of that family type of feel, the Creed family. He said that, you know, he didn't really feel like he needed to be a part of it as Rocky, like playing that Rocky character. He didn't feel like he needed to be a part of it because it's more focused on the creeds. And he said, you know, he's not in this film, but, you know, if they do a Creed 4, he's going to be in that. So I don't know, but it sounds like, and I've I've been doing my research, it sounds like they are looking to do a Creed 4 and it might be in the works already. And they left room, they left good room for it. You can almost, let me not say you can almost, you can tell what the next chapter mm -hmm. is going to be. Yeah. Now, things that I loved about this, and we can get more into the background in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, they included a deaf character, the, the young lady that played, what was her name? Uh, Who, Amara? Her Amara Cree, Mila Davis Kent. Mm -hmm. She's deaf in real life and basically the whole cast and I think the crew learned sign language so that they could communicate with her on set but also because they would be using sign language mm -hmm. in the film and there were even even they made uh Brianna played by T Tessa Thompson they made her she was starting to go deaf and so I I love when I see um films that take a, a group that's not centered mm -hmm. usually and they bring them in they go okay this is what they have or who they are and then they just let the character be from there like you noted the inclusiveness but it wasn't like you have to do this around deaf people kind of thing it was she's deaf and this is how they build their life or how it changed their life and it's not it's it doesn't overpower the actual and story. it was it was nice to see i guess how far they came from that because in the um original cree one and cree two we know that bianca is losing her hearing and she's an, she's an artist like this is what she does for a living so she goes on stage you know she can't hear herself properly and things like that so it's kind of like, you know, to see how she's kind of overcome, at the character herself, how she's overcoming it. When they had Amara in Creed 2, um, Michael, Michael B. Jordan's character, Adonis, he was very like, 
oh my gosh, what does this mean? What is she going to do? Is she going to be normal? Like all of that. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, to then see that everything kind of turned out fine. You know, they ended up learning sign language. The house is completely designed for a deaf person. His, Adonis's house is completely designed. So like the floors are see-through. There's lights whenever the doorbell rings or whenever there's like an alert in the house, like the lights change. So I just thought that all of that was really like, I love to see that they included that in the movie and they even just showed the progression, I guess is what I, I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, all right, we talked, we mentioned Rocky. How did we get to Creed 3? What's the basic storyline? Like, we know that Rocky was a, a down on his luck guy. Mm -hmm. He got into boxing. He won the fights. He had his challenges. How do we go from Rocky to Creed? So, I'm going to keep it brief just because I don't want to talk about it. I need to, too. Yeah. So, basically, <laughs> like in the Rocky movies, um, basically Adonis Creed, he's the whole reason why Rocky was the underdog. Like he basically saw Rocky fight and then said, hey, you know, I want to take the underdog. I want to fight him. I know I'm going to beat him, but I just want to like, you know, the Italian stallion and, and Adonis Creed, go at it. Like he was doing it more as a publicity stunt and then ended up, basically the underdog ended up winning. So as years went on and, you know, the Rocky films progressed, you know, Rocky had new opponents. You know, when, when Rocky, I think it was Rocky Four. I want to say Rocky Four. I think was the film where he had to. Um, I think it might have been three or four. I don't remember, but basically he had to fight this really, really tough opponent, which was played by, oh my gosh, what is his name? What was the character's name? Uh, Pity the Fool. Oh gosh, now you. Uh, it's drawing um, me a blank. Mr. T. Yes, he had to fight him. And basically, like, Adonis kind of took him under his wing and said, like, look, I'm going to train you because you just lost your way. You've gotten so into all of this. Because at, at that point, you know, Rocky was just a figure. He was popular. He was doing all these ads and everything like that. So Apollo Creed trained him at that point and they became friends. And then that's when in the next film, um, Adonis Creed dies because he fights... Uh, Drago, which is the Russian fighter. He ended mm -hmm. up fighting him and Drago killed him in the ring. Yes. And then that's when, you know, Rocky came as the underdog again and he like beat up Drago and then all that was over. And then fast forward, um, Creed won. You know, we meet um, his wife, Marianne, uh, Creed's wife, Marianne. And she's going to this um, juvenile center to pick up Adonis because Adonis was actually a product of infidelities from Apollo Creed. Mm -hmm. So she knew about it, but she went to go get him because, you know, he's a troubled kid and she wanted to help him because that's still Apollo's blood. Like they weren't going to just leave him behind. So they went and got him. She raised him as her own because I think the mother passed away. And, you know, then we go on to you know the creed series you know he wanted to fight you know just like his dad but he didn't want the stigma of his dad like he didn't want people to look at him as baby creed we see in the film when people they, call him baby call him creed he gets, real he gets upset he fights like he gets you know he he doesn't want to live under his father's shadow that was the yeah. whole premise of the creed films it's like he wants to be his own man but he still carries that name so that's how we kind of progress from Rocky to like the Creed to, films. To the Creed series. Mm -hmm. And then Rocky ends up training Apollo in um, one and two. He ends up being his trainer. Okay. And so um, Dame, Diamond Dame, uh, played by John Jonathan Majors, comes into the picture because he was in that same juvenile facility, facility. With him, yeah and you know they had their share of trouble and when the movie opens it kind of opens with um a flashback mm -hmm. and it was um jonathan majors the young jonathan majors character he he was like a a golden glove in their town mm -hmm. so um in california so basically, you know, he he went with him to all his fights. He was basically like the dude that carried his bags yeah. and everything like that. Like Apollo was the one that was going to him, going his things and, you know, helping make deals and stuff like that. Like in the first scene, you see him hand some woman some money, like a, a load of money or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
So it was like, he was kind of like his right hand man at that time. And, you know, um, as kids, when they were in this juvenile facility, they ended up basically, you know, running into some people that were supposed to be mentors, but ended up not really mentoring them the way they were supposed to, ended up being more abusive than helpful. Mm -hmm. So you see where, I guess there's that flashback where they're coming back from this big fight, um, Diamond Dame wins and everything, and they got all this money, and they're talking about going to the corner store and getting some snacks and everything. And he runs into one of, Apollo goes into the store with the money, and he runs into one of the guys from the juvenile um, center that was supposed to kind of be like a father to them and like, you know, mentor them and help them. And, he was and yeah, he was abusing them. So he goes and beats him up because now, you know, he got hands. So. He got hands. He's <laughs> gotten older. Like he's not that little kid that he once was in the juvenile detention center. And unfortunately, it led to Dame getting involved. And at that time, Dame was carrying guns and he was also involved in some other stuff that he shouldn't have been involved in. And he ended up getting locked up. Apollo went free. Right. Apollo ran. Mm -hmm. And Dame took... Took the blame took, for everything. And because he was carrying a concealed weapon, like, you know. Right. And so he comes back into the picture, meets up with Creed and is like, yo, I want the belt. I, I, I want to be right back on top. He wanted to kind of pick up like nothing happened in between. It just got out of jail and he immediately wanted to be the contender. And so the story progresses from there. We're not going to give away anything after that point. But um, normally when you get a twist in the story, there's a little twist. Mm -hmm. And usually when you get the twist in the story, it's it's kind of a big thing that happens, but this was the simplest thing that turned everything on its head and basically got the two of them in the ring together. So um, if you haven't seen it, which by now I think everybody's seen it. We went to see it last week. We I don't, you know what? Wrong. I want to say that because these movies go in and out and Creed is now available on streaming. That's what I was getting to. So <laughs> it is so available. if you haven't seen it, it's on streaming. Um, I think at this point it's headed, headed into the limited theater availability. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen it or if you saw it before, Go see it a second. She saw it twice. Go see it a second time. It's actually really good. I mm -hmm. love the way they put it together. Ryan Coogler and uh, Michael B. Jordan were directors on this one. And I don't know if you know this. Um, it's going to get a little personal here. You remember when my apartment got flooded? Mm -hmm. And I had to stay in the hotel for like three months? Yeah. At the time, they were filming. I want to say they were filming two at the time oh. and a lot of the crew was staying in this, the same hotel as i was so that that's my touch oh i didn't know that's that. where i touched the creed series oh that's crazy <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. yeah it was crazy good times good times so anyway um you got our recommendation at five five all the way around and i seriously recommend if you if you really want to get into it or understand even a lot of the there's like little things that they're going to like throw in there. Creed is not one of those movies where you have to watch them in order, but it's good to watch them in order and it's good to even start as far back as Rocky so you get a lot of the references so the and yeah, and then you kind of understand the history because even um Duke mm -hmm. Duke was um he's the son of Apollo's trainer. The guy that was training him. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. So it's like there's just a lot of history that it's good to watch the Rocky movies first just so that you have that background information. But I definitely recommend starting from the beginning. I know Rocky and Creed, they're available on HBO Max and Amazon Prime right now. Okay. So it's a nice little Easter watch or, well, I guess we ain't on Easter. Probably. You know, today's Easter. You know, but. Moving into summertime, you know. Yeah. On them rainy days that we've been getting go ahead and watch it but i think we both give it a five mm -hmm. i'll say this i watching it for the first time um it's predictable but not in a bad way 
I think all sports movies are like that. Yeah, though. I mean, it's named Creed, so guess who won? Yeah, it's um, like you know that somebody's... <laughs> but it's all about that, like, anticipation. Because you know right. in the film they're going to get knocked down a couple times, but it's how they it's how they get back. That's what makes yeah. it so enjoyable or fun. Yeah, like, and while we were in the theater, there were people that were like, oh, 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 get them. <laughs> no, I was like they were watching a real boxing the, match. Yeah, and it's like that. Like I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, yeah, hit him, hit him. Like yeah, it's just look, like we we were on the front row. Don't ask why. <laughs> we were on the front row, and we're sitting there like. <gasps> and you know, I'm not a front row person when I go to the movies. I hate sitting in the front row, but. That movie is actually worth watching in the front row. I'm not even going to like lie. That was actually okay to see in the front row. Okay. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. I think next week I'm um, going to do a classic. I think as, lo as long as nothing else changes, okay. we'll be bringing a classic. So, um, yeah, this one you're going to have to dig up. You're probably going to have to go to the library to find it, but... I'll put the announcement in the banners. Make sure you follow us here. Um, find us on Facebook under Movies That Move We. You can find our entire playlist, everything that we've done before this, on YouTube at Media That Moves We. And then click on the Movies That Move We playlist. Don't forget to invite, like, share, post, Invite your friends to, to come and watch. And hey, don't hesitate to leave some comments below. Thoughts, questions, things you like, things you didn't like, share. That's what the whole purpose of this is. So until next week, thanks for joining us and we'll see you later. Bye.